Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dana. I am the HGIC here at Divine Goddess Soaps. We're continuing along with our July in Halloween, or Halloween in July. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Willy Wonka that, strike that, reverse it, you know, all that good stuff. Um, but we're continuing along with our Halloween series here. But we're doing something a little different. I got a little format happy and lost the footage of me actually making these bath bombs. So I figured I'd do kind of a live painting situation uh, and go through everything on how I airbrush them, how I paint them, all that fun stuff. This mold uh, was a Kata mold. It's just one of their 3D printed molds, three piece 3D printed molds. But yeah, let's go ahead and get into it here. Uh, so to start off with, this is the airbrush that I use. This is the Neo airbrush from Iwata. Uh, this is, these two are separate items. They're sold separately on Amazon. Last I checked, um, everything was still in stock. Prime Day's coming. Might be a great time to get one if you don't have one. Love this thing. I've been using it for years. Same one. Absolutely love it. Uh, this is a siphon fed airbrush. So you use little bottles. And I just get these off of Amazon too. Much prefer these over the gravity feed ones, which is the ones that have the little well on the top. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to show you how I fill my bottles when I'm just getting started here. Now these bottles do hold quite a bit. I now get the ones with the little, little ball in them. It just helps everything mix better. And I just have a container of these. I write on the side here what colors in it and yeah so this color that we're going to use today is the orange marmalade from nurture and then i use these little micro scoops if i can pick it up here these little micro scoops to fill it up i use quite a few scoops but i chose these because they fit nicely inside the bottle so I usually do five to six, depending on the color. And you don't have to level out the scoops. I just kind of put some in there. You'll know if your mixture is too thick uh, because it won't spray. <laughs> and if it's too thin, you won't get much color. So yeah, that looks about right. So you see here, it's kind of, oh, it's hard to, do. Oh, let's do that side. So it's just a little bit, just a little bit in the bottom there compared to how much rubbing alcohol we're going to put in there. So I just use 91% rubbing alcohol. This I got at Walmart, but you can pretty much get it anywhere here in the States. Uh, 99 will work too. I do not recommend anything less than 91. The percentage is the amount of alcohol to water. So you don't want to add too much water to your finished bath bombs because it could cause them to activate. All right, so I just fill it completely up with rubbing alcohol and then I'm gonna give it a good shake. Now with these bottles, there's a hole here and a hole here. So I will actually cover it with a towel or a paper towel, whatever I have handy when I'm shaking it because otherwise you're gonna end up with this mixture everywhere. Ask me how I know. <laughs> So we're just going to give it a good shake here. Okay. Now you will have to shake this every time you use it because the mica will drop to the bottom and you don't want to use it if the mica has separated because if you get the, a clump of mica sucked up into that tube, it's going to clog it and then you have to stop and clean it out. But before I do that, I actually just remembered I did not clean this last time I used it. So I'm going to show you how I do that. So this is the airbrush cleaner that I use. This is just what was recommended to me on Amazon when I bought 
my airbrush. So this is all I've ever used. It lasts quite a while. And I just keep one of those bottles with cleaner in it. Now this will evaporate in the bottle. So just kind of be aware of that. You know, if you don't use your airbrush for a while and you come back and your cleaner bottle's empty, well, that's why, because it evaporated. <laughs> so I just fill that up. And then I keep the little cap on mine just to kind of prevent it from evaporating. These other bottles do come with caps, but nine times out of ten I don't put them on them because I just lose them. So then I just uh, created this little tub. All it is is a dollar store plastic food container with some paper towels in it and I cut a hole in the top. So turn your airbrush on and you just spray it in there. And I kind of move it around to clean sections of the paper towel just so that I can make sure all the colors out of there. Then when you remove the bottles, there's still going to be some liquid in this little chamber here. So I just grab a towel, cover the whole thing, and pull it out of there. And then I just kind of tap it on my finger here just to get all the liquid out. And then I'll spray it off on a paper towel just to clear the airbrush. And then you're good to go. I'm going to go ahead and take my color here and give it another give it another shake. This does separate very quickly. So you'll see me even throughout when I'm airbrushing, I'll give this a good shake. And then to start it off, I just spray it off on my paper towel. And I'm getting a good saturation of color there so I know my mixture is not too thick or thin. I'm just questioning the color, but that's okay. We're just going to go with it. So I'm just going to airbrush along the sides here just to kind of give them a little bit of a shadow. Okay, there we go. And I think I'm just going to do all of the sides here. Okay. Uh, one more thing with this airbrush. This is a dual action. So when you press, you just get air. So you actually have to pull the press and, oh, let me get on camera here. So you actually have to press and pull the trigger in order to get any color. See, I'm just pressing here and I'm not getting any color. But if I pull the trigger back and press, now I'm getting color. Okay, we're just going to take that off there. Okay. Now when I'm actually going through and airbrushing a bunch of bath bombs, I don't um, clean it out until I'm, I'm ready to go or until I'm done with it. But those bottles don't stand up. <laughs> so since I'm moving on here. I just took the bottle out. Now for when I'm hand painting, I just keep my alcohol and mica mixture, same, same mixture. Um, in these little containers, I've got these bigger ones and I've got some smaller ones. I prefer the smaller ones just because I can store more in my little drawer that I have. Um, but these are just condiment containers and I keep the lid on it and I just write what colors in there on the lid. Now, the alcohol will still evaporate in these containers even though they don't have ooh, even though they have a lid on them, they just don't evaporate as fast. So, 
just make sure that you check the consistency of your mixture every time you want to paint it. And what I do, I don't know if I can really show this here, but I can tell if my mixture is too thin or thick when I swirl it. If I get just a light coating of the mica on the side of the container and then it kind of fades back out to the clear, then I know that my mixture is fine. You can also tell if you, when you start painting the bath bomb, if the mica looks like it's just sitting on top of the bath bomb, then chances are it's too thick and you just want to add a little bit more rubbing alcohol and thin it out. Now the biggest thing to keep in mind when you're hand painting a bath bomb is you are painting something that is incredibly porous. So you want to start with less paint mixture, paint mixture, uh, than you think you're going to need because you can always add more, but it's very, very hard to take it away. And when I'm going along the edges here, I'll start in the center just to kind of get the excess paint off of my brush because it will bleed where I don't want it to. Because again, you're painting something that is incredibly porous. Okay, so you just continue along with that. I'm just going to continue painting these and then we will move on to the stem. And don't be too hard on yourself if you get it kind of on the sides. Some of these detailed areas are very thin. <laughs> um, and if you get a little bit on the side of it, it's okay. It's a handmade bath bomb. Like, if somebody wanted something that's absolutely perfect, then they should buy something that was machine made. Just my opinion. Don't be too hard on yourself. Sometimes as artists, we are our own worst critics. And nine times out of ten... The consumer is not going to notice if you get a little paint on the side of the mouth. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do the stem. And I forgot to grab some brown here. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so this is the Lustrous Brown from Nurture. I probably would have used Mocha, but not entirely sure where it is. So we're going to go with this. Okay, so I'm going to give everything a good mix here, and I can already tell I am going to need to add more rubbing alcohol to this because this is very thick. And it's been a minute since I've used this color, so... And if you ever add too much rubbing alcohol, you can either just add a bit more mica, or if you don't have any more of that mica, just let it sit out for a while. It'll evaporate. It'll be fine. Okay. Okay, so I just kind of outlined where I'm going to paint there since there's not an actual outline on the mold. Oh, and now my phone's going off. Sorry about that, y'all.
All right, there we go. Cute little jack-o'-lantern. Uh, now, if y'all have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Um, I try and answer, you know, any, any comment that is left. Um, but yeah, if you haven't already, please go ahead and pan for that like button. If you're not, please go ahead and subscribe. And as always, take some time to pamper your inner goddess. Self-care is so important for every her, him, and they. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.